You know, it's got big control columns, big throttles. You know, you got big chunks of wood there. Uh, rudder pedals, you know, move almost a foot and a half in and out. Huh. Why do we love Warbirds so much? That's a question that uh, if you're watching this, you're probably asking yourself. And well, I'm asking myself, why am I laying on the cold ground? <laughs> One sec. <coughs> Curtis C-46, very rare aircraft nowadays. You know, in 10 years, I might be watching this with nostalgia, thinking about the time we used to run the C-46, this magnificent beast. And uh, so today I just wanna talk a little bit about why do we love airplanes? Why do we love warbirds? Why do we love vintage airplanes? And why in this day and age, we're still flying them? It's a, it's a big question and it's not an easy answer, but let's, let's look into it today. Welcome to season two, episode 39 of Plane Savers. Hey folks, you guys are probably wondering why it's dark out. Uh, I'm racing to get the C46 landing today. Uh, Fokker, we're gonna have some Fokker updates. I uh, got some big news coming in, but right now I'm holding my phone as a light and now I can't see anything, but we're gonna run outside right now and try to catch that C46 landing. And we're gonna catch up with Will and uh, Jeff Schroeder to talk about the C46 today. So watch this. What's happening? Not too much. Four six just land, so warming it up a bit. Unload, load, and next the valley. We got right oil eater, left oil eater, yeah, and cockpit eater. In the meantime, we are uh, we'll tend all the engines so they don't freeze up. It's not too bad today. It's only like minus 15, but uh, yeah, it's are doing the same process when it's under zero. So, what's your thoughts on the big warbirds here in the winter time? It's a lot of work, but it's make more noise, I think, yeah, so <laughs> it's good. <laughs> okay, we got James Doja. Hey, James. Hey. How long have you been working on the C-46? Oh, I think I've been working on these airplanes for almost 20 years already. Oh, it smells. What makes the C-46 so special? What makes it so special is the payload it can deliver where and where we can go with it. A lot of these new airplanes you can't go where we go with with the 46 it's more or less the biggest bang for your buck for what we for what we do we have pieces in here that people will just laugh at and say how the, did you get that in there and well that's what we do with a more modern airplane it's a lot of its composite now these airplanes were built for wartime use so they're built like flying tanks they're made to take the gunfire and land in a field somewhere and some farmer hit it with a wrench to make it go again. Um, we got we got specs for the props to take bullet holes, dress it out and keep on going. Like bullet holes, come on now. So for the temperatures that we deal with and where we go, these machines are, are fabulous. So the plan today um, is after lunch, we're gonna push this machine out and give it a run because I just changed the left-hand mag on it. Uh, it was kind of giving us a little grumble issues. So hopefully we take the bang bang out and send her on our way. Clear right? Clear on my side. So now we're gonna do a power run on the engine okay. to ensure that the mag is serviceable and the engine is serviceable. Picked 
an engine. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, we're gonna go with the Jacobs 755 radial engine. In fact, it, an engine that was already on this aircraft, uh, which makes a, it a hell of a lot easier. I know we uh, spent some time thinking about putting the PT6 on, uh, but ultimately it came down to straight cost and time. Um, as you can imagine, doing all the, the mods to it uh, was, was gonna be pretty crazy. So that being said, we're gonna stick with the radial engine, the beautiful, beautiful radial engines. Uh, and I gotta have a big shout out to Dan McNiven at the Great War Flying Museum um, and Dave Sargent who uh, have been working behind the scenes getting the engine ready. So we're gonna get an engine, an engine mount that was actually made for that airframe. Rod did the measurements and measures up perfectly. Um, even though the frame is a little bit twisted that we're gonna, the, we need to fix, uh, the actual uh, measurement for the engine mounts uh, still line up perfectly, which is great, great news. Uh, and so we got the engine, we got the mount, also some exhaust. Uh, they're gonna be repairing some exhaust that they have. Uh, so when we get the engine, it's gonna be a full bolt-on kit, which is gonna save us a heck of a lot of time. Uh, so we got the engine. So you're now asking yourself about the props, and I'm super happy to say that uh, Culliver Props, uh, who makes some of the best handmade propellers for World War II, World War I aircraft in the world, uh, have agreed to build our prop uh, and I'm in the waiting list now, which is gonna be very cool. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get a custom handmade prop. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, amazing stuff, I love the handmade stuff. So, we, so stuff's looking up. I know our timelines are a little bit stretched right now, um, but that's what the fun, that's what the fun is, folks. Uh, trying to fit in everything. And uh, yeah, that's what I love to do. Speaking of fitting in, I wonder how uh, William's doing in that cockpit right now. How was it, James? Top notch. No, no bend bend. So we got a freighter tonight. It's good to go? Good to go. William, how was it? Good. Well, a bit of noise for the neighbors, but that's cool. <laughs> it's okay. Jeff Schroeder, how's it going? How's it going, Mikey? Good. So, Jeff Schroeder, if you've been watching the live streams, he comes in once in a while double checking that we're all okay. <laughs> Highest time C46 pilot in the world? You betcha. How many hours? Well, I think we're around 24, almost 24 and a half thousand now. Jeez. Just on the 46 alone. So this is like the 46 episode so far. Yeah. Why do you love the 46 so much? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, well, the 46 is probably the coolest airplane in the world to fly. You know, it's big. It's, it's not noisy. It has a beautiful sound to it. There's probably another another airplane, uh, you know, the, the C-46, the radials, the 2800, um, you know, it's just, it's energy, it's vibration, it's sound, it's not annoying sound, you know, like, and, and the other thing about the C-46 is it's cool, like it's the coolest airplane in the world because you look and, you know, uh, uh, you taxi somewhere, people will every, always will look, come out and look and take pictures of the C-46 and, you know, they can't wait for the 46 to take off because it's exciting, you know, it, you know, you got 2,700 RPM, 52 inches, 2,000 RPM, you know, horsepower per engine. That's 4,000, you know, on a twin-engine airplane. You know, the props are going supersonic. You know, you get, it's just really cool. And the good thing about it is, again, you know, you taxi by, you know, it doesn't matter where it is. Everybody's taking pictures because it's so cool. You know, if you're in a King Air or something like that, everybody just plugs their ears because it's noisy. So, I mean, like, nobody takes pictures. It's not cool. Like, like a King Air, like, you know, it's like driving a, a Honda Civic, everybody has a Honda Civic, but when a Porsche or Ferrari pulls by, everybody looks, eh? Everybody needs to understand, and you know, whoever knows anything about the C46 will know you'll never master the C46. You'll be good at it, but you'll never master it. You know, you have such a, a short uh, uh, wheelbase from the mains to the tail wheel. Um, it's a very squirrely airplane. You know, it's got big control columns, big throttles, you know, you got big chunks of wood there. Uh, rudder pedals, you know, move almost a foot and a half in and out. Um, you know, it's a tail dragger. The tail wheel's free castering. You know, it doesn't it's not doesn't have a nose wheel tiller or nothing like that. So when you you know you talk about the C46, don't think that you're going to get you're going to be a master at it because nobody ever is. You're good at it, but you'll never master it. Even you know myself, you know, after you know thirty some odd years now flying it, you'll be landing. And all of a sudden, it could be dead calm out. And all of a sudden, it just takes a left turn or a right turn for no reason. 
it's completely unpredictable, the C-46. It just goes off one direction or the other. Where most airplanes, you know, they're very stable. Right? But uh, so that, yeah, like, again, if, you, if you're a new guy um, and if you're up for a challenge, if you're not up for a challenge, you know, uh, go fly your King Air or something. Because, you know, it's pretty easy. It's not hard. Eh? So that's perfect segue. Thank you, Jeff. All right, Mike. I'm going to go find William, who's been busy getting ready for the flight. William? So we just got Jeff Schroeder giving us the lowdown on the C-46. Yeah. What's your thoughts? Holy smokes, you're bright uh, in your face here. Yeah. <laughs> What's my thought about the 46? Yeah. Oh, uh, jeez. It's all brand new for me, yeah, so. But it's, it's a cool plane. Lots of noise or sound. I don't know. How about, yeah. the, how about the challenge of flying it? Oh, it's really challenging. I, it's, I, it's probably the highest time C-46 and probably the lowest time checked out on the world right now. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's challenging for sure. Bye, William. Did it work?